All right, uh, Tim Callishaw, Dallas Morning News columnist and uh, star of ESPN's Around the Horn, and a guy who does a great job in breaking down hype videos. That's part of his, that's a side job that he has. And uh, Tim, kind enough to join us from his busy day to let us mm-hmm. know why Dak Prescott was not included in the hype video with the Cowboys. Oh, man, this is, this is the story of the year, I would think, that uh, that didn't happen. You know, I, I don't know. It certainly doesn't seem like it could happen by accident. Like, <laughs> did we forget somebody? We got CD Lamb. We got this guy. We got that. We got Demarcus Lawrence. Um, it, so the fact that it couldn't happen by accident tells you that it's a little, very subtle shot from the Cowboys. They don't. They don't have a lot of ammunition in their in their quiver. Uh, so that this is their, Hey, Hey, you know, we're, we're a team here. We're not all about one player. And, uh, I don't think it will amount to anything, but it, it does seems a little petty on their part. But if you're saying that, Tim, then Jerry Jones or his son and son, Stephen Jones had to know about this. What did they know? And when did they know? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> you would think, but, uh, what's this accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't accomplish anything. It gets people talking about it, and it gets Cowboy fans scared. Oh, they're really not going to sign Dak. Oh, what are we going to do for a quarterback? Which, you know, that just makes them one of about 22 teams who don't know who their quarterback is. Thanks largely to you, the 22nd was added yesterday. We thought Russell Wilson was fine, the man of the year and all, and now we find out he's got a camp, and his camp doesn't like it there. Way to go. Uh, it, it feels like this Dak Prescott, and you know how it works in the media because the Cowboys get clicks. Then we're always talking yes. about the Cowboys or Aaron Rodgers or Baker Mayfield. It's same stories over and over and over. If Dak signs the franchise tag, then it still is a story because they didn't get a long-term deal. Or if he signs a long-term deal, then why didn't they do a franchise tag? This is like this story's not going away no matter what happens with Dak Prescott, whether it's a short-term or long-term deal. I, I think if it's a long-term deal, it goes away a little. Um, if it's a, if it's a franchise deal, no, no question. Uh, that's 37 million. That's 20% of their cap. Roughly. We don't know the cap figure. That's way too much money for one player. And so they're in that same kind of uh, ditch that they dug themselves last year when they wouldn't give him a four-year deal, which still makes no sense to anybody. I know. They, they put a line in the sand we didn't know they had. Who, who knew they had a line about a four-year deal? But they could have gotten a bargain if they did this when they originally started, right? Tim? Oh, a long time ago. Yes. A long time ago. Yeah, remember, <laughs> his contract realistically, uh, they, they, could have, they could have redone him. They should have redone him before Zeke. And that seems like ages ago they did Zeke. That's a year and a half ago they did Zeke. So, yeah, now, now the one question I would pose is, you know, everything with him has been compared to Wentz and Golf from the same draft class. Those two teams didn't turn out to be happy with those second contracts they did with those players. How much do the Cowboys need to pay attention to that? Not that they're the same player, but there's a lot of fluctuation in those three uh, because there's a lot of second contracts teams get into and they're like, man, including Zeke's, by the way. Yeah. It's like, why do we do that? That's that's too much money. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I was a vocal critic of signing up Zeke Elliott to a, a second contract there. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, is there any chance the Cowboys move on from Dak Prescott? I, I always have to say there's a chance. With Jerry Jones, there's always a chance. I, would, I, would, I, I think it's very limited even though there's some options out there and you could go say, Hey, we could go do a deal and just move on and have more money to spend elsewhere. Cause we saw last year, this team has a lot of needs. There's a reason they have the 10th pick and it's not just Dak's injury, but that chance is less than 10%. I think Dak is your quarterback this year. Yeah. Has anybody heard from Dak? Not really. Uh, he had a second surgery. That's been reported. That's never great. Uh, he had a second surgery in December, but I mean that's a long time from being from being you know anything for this year. But no, he keeps uh, other than doing commercials, he keeps a fairly low profile. Any other drama going on in Dallas with the Cowboys that we need to be aware of on this program? 
Well, with the Cowboys, you know, the 10th pick, we have that going on. Uh, we have some drama with another owner in Dallas. And whether you want to dive into that, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, you know, with, with the Cowboys, it's just... Well, you can bring up Mark Cuban. Mark Mark Cuban says that uh, you know the, the Mavs aren't going to play the national anthem before right. the game, and and he Which said he decided this a while ago. Decided in November. Me being the intrepid reporter that I am, <laughs> I've been to two home games. I did not notice that they were not playing the anthem. Uh, I did not pick up on that. Now, there's no fans at those games, so it would seem kind of odd. Although they still do the rest of the pregame. Um, you know, you get into a very difficult area with people. You know, media tends to be a little cynical. I've been to thousands of games. The anthem is kind of a boring thing that you stand there for. I realize what it means to some people who don't go to a lot of games. Uh, but we have to recognize what it means to, uh, to players in the NBA. And uh, it shouldn't be the story that it will be. But since I don't think anybody else is going to follow his lead, I'll be surprised if they do, then I, I suspect it will be an ongoing story here. How? It, what's the reaction locally? Well, I, I don't think it's uh, – this is Dallas, Texas, so I don't think it's overwhelmingly positive. But I would say this. The people that are upset about it, they're not going to Mavericks games anyway. They bailed out on Mark Cuban in the NBA a long time ago. So, I mean, the loud voices on Twitter. Now, as far as the people themselves – I suspect most of them just want, you know, Porzingis to stay healthy and Luca to get his triple doubles and get into the playoffs. They really can move on from this, but there's going to be a vocal minority that doesn't go to games that we'll hear from for quite a while. Are you on around the horn today? I'm taking a day off. I'm going to try to restock these shelves behind me. As you <laughs> see, they're a little barren. <laughs> You have this nice, warm, cozy fire. I know. What, this it, perfect it, man cave. That's so sad. Like, there's no awards. There's no, like, there's nothing. It means I come with, it means I come with no agenda. <laughs> I, I, Wait I a minute. Uh, Tim, are you at an Ikea? No. <laughs> I'm in a room that uh, it may have been emptied out. Somebody may have left in the last year. I don't know. Oh, I don't, oh I don't, no. I don't know. Oh, don't know. no. Wait, did she uh, take did she take stuff with her? Well, it would appear. <laughs> but no, it's it, actually things are okay. So she, I don't want to But but she left your heart. She didn't take your heart. Uh no no no. She's still there. She just doesn't reside here. But <laughs> did you here. have to did you have to cut your around the horn victories in half and give her half of your around the horn victory. I now have only 240 wins. Yeah, but that's the case. And Woody Page would have like nine victories, right? Oh yeah, his, his would be all over the globe. <laughs> so yeah, that would be a, that would be a very tenuous thing if we if we hung on like that. I will be back on Friday. We did talk certainly about your Russell Wilson thing yesterday. And real quick, here's what I said about that. We think it's not a big deal, but think about this: Wilson and Mahomes started their careers the same way. In their second and third years as a starter, two Super Bowls and won one of them. Wilson hasn't gone to the last six NFC title games. What what are we thinking if Mahomes doesn't go to any of the next six AFC title games? Something has gone really, really wrong in Kansas City. So that's kind of how we should look at that Wilson thing. Well, you can say is is uh, Mahomes the next Tom Brady or the next Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, right. Yeah, and... Uh, what do you think Russell was trying to say, Tim? What's that? What do you think Russell Wilson was trying to say? Because he he doesn't normally say anything. Yeah, he, he certainly didn't say, oh, I'm not a man. I love Seattle. I'm not, that's the farthest <laughs> thing from my mind. That was not his answer. He gave a big smile and practically <laughs> thanked him for asking the question. Um, I don't know, because it's off... It's certainly... That, that You know, you watch them play. He's got receivers. He's got Chris Carson. They move the ball, they score 30, but they give up 30. I mean, I, I think maybe he wants a better defensive team, but it's not like that team's in shambles. That team's pretty good. It just feels like management has never truly believed in Russell Wilson. Even though Pete maybe. gave him a chance, when they, they signed Matt Flynn from Green Bay 
And yeah. Pete, Pete still, after a big free agent signing, gave Russ that job. So he believed in him then. It's just weird to watch the game plan sometimes. Because this is the first year they sort of let Russ cook. Because the right. other years it was defense and run the football and then Russ helped right. us out late in the fourth quarter. And that's when they won. And now people are probably saying, okay, Russell threw his 600 passes this year and how do we do? Uh, you know, we need to go back to what we used to be. So I don't know. There's, there's not very many quarterbacks who end up happy in this league. I mean, if you think about who just who won the Super Bowl and what he had to do a year ago. Yeah. So nobody really ends up happy, which is, which is kind of a sad state of affairs. Yeah, he doesn't end his career in Seattle. But then nobody ends their career except not for, anymore. you know, Elway did, but he, he limped off. He couldn't play anymore. Yeah. Nobody else has that ending. Yeah. Limp off in the Super Bowl. Hey, uh, we'll be watching on – you know what? As a, a, a show of uh, support, I'm not going to watch Around the Horn today or tomorrow. I'm going to gear up Take for Friday. Take a day Friday. off. Come back strong Friday. Yeah, I will. Thank you, Tim. All right, thanks, Tim. That's Tim Kalishon, Dallas Morning News columnist and star of Around the Horn Contribute.